You made a monster, a mere imposter Go ahead and wander, but don't trust the water monster The World Touring Car Series heads to Fuji for its final race meeting of the season. This is where we are going to crown three champions. One in the Pro Class, one in the M Class, and, well, we'll crown a team champion as well here today. My name's Conry Manick. I'm joined as ever by Peter Mackay for this evening's events. And, well, this is the time that we've all been waiting for since the very uh, start of the season. We knew... So it will have to come to a close at some point, and it does so here this evening, uh, here in Japan, uh, Peter. It does, it does, and it comes, we come into this round with Corentin Guinez leading the points as things stand, and with a fairly healthy margin. However, it's never over till it's over. In the AM class, we've got Ben Gregory leading the way from Dad Martin, but it's really the team championships that could go either way tonight. Pure Sims, Esports, and DKC by Sim RC, they are the two outfits to look out for, and that is very tight at the moment. Who will come on top? We'll find out. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's still unknowns. There's still uh, a mathematical chance uh, for the second place in each of these uh, categories um, to uh, get themselves uh, all the glory at the end of the day. But for some, it's going to be way more harder than others. Let's just say that. But uh, uh, I can't wait to get started here. The, the drivers uh, are out completing the very final laps of their open qualifying session here. Uh, right now as well we got more news news on that once we get the the, the pre-show uh, out of the way but let's take a look at uh, uh well the uh points i believe first of all we can have a look at the uh, schedule as well there's the points as uh, current uh, uh well he's been the stand-up performer over the course of this entire season that's probably very fair to say however he wasn't able to mathematically secure it at the end of the previous round so you'll have to do it here and now but the only, uh, well, the points delta that he needs to McFarlane in these three races, uh, Peter, it's just 10 points. Just 10 points he needs to gain um, to be able to, uh, well, uh, uh, to be able to secure it, I guess. Yeah, and that's the that's the equivalent of, uh, you know, if, if, if Guinness were to win the race, um, McFarlane would have to score third or better to stop that from happening. But... Uh, of course, as we'll discuss in a moment, that's going to be a bit of a challenge for Ross McFarlane to get up there in that kind of position. And that's just in race one. <laughs> you know, we've got yeah. three races mm -hmm. uh, here today, so uh, uh, so it is looking 99.9999% likely that Quentin Guinness uh, will be our, our pro class champion. However, um, we need to have it mathematically confirmed uh, when uh, push comes to shove. But of course, you know, battles uh, close battles further down the order. Of course. Um, it's uh, well relatively spell out towards the very top of course everyone down uh, in and around the top 10 they're uh, still of course potentially going to be able to improve themselves a position or two 
Uh, once we get to the drop of the green flag in race three, Harrison and Holman down there, P8, P9, relatively close, is the main thing that I am looking at here at the moment. But we can move on over to the AM standings, though, because, uh, well, the gap at the front is a little bit narrower between Benjamin Gregory and uh, Dan Martin. 123 points between the two of them. Still a bit of a rift, all things considered, but definitely much closer than the battle that we have uh, in the pro class. Of course, Stefan Schlacker, despite not even competing in the last couple of rounds, he's, he's still in P3 uh, with Nick Clibbons and uh, Harry Fox rounding out the uh, top five in that one. But uh, Ben Gregory versus Dan Martin for the AM class here, Peter. Of course, the, the heavy advantage goes to Gregory at the moment, but don't count Dan out of it. No, absolutely. I mean, of course, there's, uh, you know, a theoretically 85 points for each race. So, yeah, there's plenty of points out there on the table. It will require a very strong day at the office for Dan Martin. He did have that last week at Montreal, don't forget, with some great top 10 finishes overall. Let's see what he can do in his pursuit of Ben Gregory. Take a quick look at the team's standings as well, because this is incredibly close uh, for the team's championship. Uh, we've got Pure Sims Esports that currently lead the way in that particular championship, but they're only 41 points ahead of DKC by Sim RC. And, well, usually if you say there's a 41 point difference in a championship, you think it's quite large. But when it's 4,540 points versus 4,499, uh, you, you realize that the percentages, uh, dif percentage difference is uh, definitely uh, quite narrow. So that's the main thing that we're going to be looking at here today, Peter. It is Pure Sims. Uh, versus DKC by SimRC. Um, that, that's going to be the, the main talking point here today and, and definitely the the one that's the, the most a toss-up, I suppose. Definitely 41 points with the amount of points that are available. Two drivers score, of course, out of the three nominated in each team. Um, so, yeah, there are plenty out there as well. Big story in qualifying. Well, a few. Quentin Gina is a champion-elect. Well, he's shown that he's not going to pull off the gas at all he leads the way in pole position at the moment and dan martin well he's doing everything he can to try and close down that gap in the am championship eighth overall six places ahead of championship leader ben gregory that's impressive stuff once again for dan martin and rd sims Pro. yeah doing uh, all that he needs to do to try try to narrow that gap that will be a very big help there uh, for dan martin and uh, we'll, we'll see stands once we come towards race number two here and uh, we get it underway and we get towards the end but there's Jürgen Frank heading his way across the line does actually improve position over Morgan Butler up into P6 on his final lap there there's Konstantin Salzenberg who's uh, getting himself in towards uh, the final sector of things here in that number eight uh, car he's got his team PGC Motorsport teammate behind him and it's so crucial here in qualifying especially at a circuit such as this one where you have that big drafting opportunity down in towards turn number one to have a friend out there to have a teammate yeah, it's absolutely critical. I think when you run out of turn 16, Panasonic corner, all the way down to turn one at Daichi, it's a it's huge, huge distance. One of the longest straightaways anywhere on the iRacing simulator. And yeah, that drag, uh, that draft from the car in front is vitally, vitally important. important. Stoltzenberg, he goes up to seven. So Dan Martin actually there bumped back a couple of places. So He'll start four places ahead of his AM class rival Ben Gregory, but it's Guinez on pole position with Wojciech Savidovic once again, Connery, playing the, the role of the wild card in that, uh, in that battle up the front. Yeah, it's great to see an on-form Wojciech Savinovic, isn't it? He had a bit of a rocky start to the season, but these last couple of races here at the very end... Uh, but definitely turned to gold for him. Uh, well, the qualifying effort's fantastic. Let's see if a race one effort is fantastic for Savidovic. But, of course, as it stands right now, as we wait for that timer to wind down, it is uh, Quentin Guinez that gets himself another pole position here, putting that Veloster uh, on the pole, the only Veloster inside the top five, as we have to look back to Jürgen Frank uh, to find another Hyundai Veloster. We've got the Civic, some of the Civics up there as well, Blackhall and Ledger getting themselves stuck in. So um, definitely the balance of performance between the, uh, between the manufacturers looking relatively okay uh, here for Fuji. 
Kochi. But uh, we'll take a look at the starting grid then. There's Karantin Guinez in P1 with Wojciech Zvidovic in P2. Kieran Harris in P3 with Jake Blackall starting fourth. We've got Steen Ledger in fifth with Jürgen Frank rounding out the top six cars. Consult and Stoltzenberg will start in P7 with Morgan Butler in 8th, Floyd Rabia P9 with Daniel Martin in P10. That's ample position, basically. Uh, there's Pete Newman in P11 with Damien Owen Harris in P12. P13 goes to Jamie Rushworth with P14 going to Ben Gregory. Rob Turner will line up in 15th with Ben Palmer in 16th. Rob Sutherland in 17th with Nick Libbins 18th. Looking back, you got uh, Yaroslav Sebula in P19 with Harry Fox in P20. Marcel Fritsch P21 with Sam Smith P22. Neil Stevenson and Ross McFarlane round out the top 24. McFarlane, of course, getting himself a qualifying ban. James Holman in P25. Raphael Jarge, Craig Williams and Scott Malcolm will round out the 28 starters that we have here today. And there they all are pole position on the outside as uh, from the perspective of a run down in towards turn number one so if Savinovich can get himself a good start here get himself alongside then potentially he might be leading coming out at turn number one but let's see what will happen between all of these guys we've got ourselves well, around about 25 seconds left remaining before we get the racing going on down in towards turn number one it's a lot it's a relatively decent run down in towards turn one but of course the end of the first lap is uh, going to be potentially one of the more contentious portions of this race as everyone gets that big old slipstream down that very long pit straight. We're about to get going here for our final race meeting of the season in the World Touring Car Series. Let's get off and away. Corentin Guinness from pole position might end up being champion at the very end of this race in terms of the pro class Sovidovic not able to get himself alongside Kieran Harrison on the, uh, in third place slotting in as well so the front three get their way through turn number one relatively clean it's side by side behind so between Blackhall and Ledger the two pure sims teammates and you've got Jürgen Frank and Stoltenberg in behind as well but they'll get themselves single filed out as well no dramas really at least in amongst the front uh, uh, half of the field in towards that first turn everyone taking it very calm yeah difficult uphill battle face for Ross McFarlane uh, our defending champion coming into this season he's in 24th position having started at the back of the grid as well so a lot to do across the next 20 minutes of racing but Guinness leads away with Savinovic right on his tail a resurgent Wojciech Savinovic looking to threaten Guinness there as well but it's a Armada of Hyundai is really up there at the front with the two Pure Sims Hondas holding up the honour of Japan. This is one of uh, the Japanese race circuits that's actually not owned by Honda. Of course, Honda owned Suzuka and Mategi. This one's owned by Toyota. Well, there's such thing to know as uh, we'll get ourselves the view of these cars uh, sweeping their way through. There's a side-by-side -side moment, though. Uh, that was Stoltzenberg and Butler. Uh, for P7 and P8 out there on circuit. That was uh, not exactly ideal, but they were able to get through that one. Everyone else probably wouldn't. Well, I I'm going to chance it here, Peter. I'm going to say that's probably the cleanest start that we've ever had in this series. Oh, well, lap two, turn one. What could possibly go wrong after that uh, okay. one there from Connery <laughs> Maddox, folks? There you go. This long, this is like going down the... Uh, uh, going down the M6 motorway here it's such a long drag out of the final corner at Panasonic all the way down to Daichi and here comes Wojciech Savinovic then he's got a great run on Guinness hard on the brakes made his intention known early and gets the move done so Savinovic the old warrior gets up to the front of the field then Guinness though he needs to just play risk free here as well try and score as many points as he can for his team he's pretty much clear in the drivers championship but of course sim rc and pure sims they are in a battle for the team's championship indeed they are and uh, well at least currently we've got uh, guinez in third place he actually lost the position to his teammate of uh, kieran harrison uh, but that lost means it gave. is well <laughs> i guess uh, that's i'll <laughs> leave that as an exercise to the reader there um but uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, there's no need for really Guinness to uh, be, you know, pushing on too much in terms of his own selfishness uh, in terms of drivers' championship because he basically 
already has that on lockdown, uh, as long as he doesn't have any issues here uh, in race number one. His main task, though, is making sure that those two pure Sims cars behind him uh, can't in any way get themselves through on on uh, on, on Sim RC. And, uh, well, it's uh, going to be a tough ask, that's for sure. Yeah, this is when they're sitting in a good position at the moment, or Harrison and Gaines, they would... Uh pull another bit of uh, another bit of points back on Pearsons if they were to finish where they were but I think there's going to be a lot to shake out in this race that that run down the, the front straight is just so long that it's so difficult to defend a position if you come out behind a car out of that final corner you can get a draft on and make a move down into turn one as I say that well Savinovic looks to pull a couple of car lengths there out of the MRC cars now are they going to make a move or are they going to try and form a breakaway i think they're going to try and form a breakaway here conray as one of the other cmrc cars jürgen frank he does his role by moving up the inside of stain ledger and that of course takes points off pure sims and slows the pack up as well looks like we've got a bit of a breakaway out the front here so and black hole he's got to get a move on here yeah, he does. Oh, Frank's going to push wide there. I saw that happening from a million Ooh. miles off, but he's able to gather it up. Steen Ledger gets the back end out behind him. Um, oh, that was a little bit sketchy. Uh, but on the brakes into the left they come. Ledger applying all the pressure here uh, at the moment. But you called it there, Peter. They, they are losing track of the front group of cars. They can't afford to do so, really, um, if they want to keep themselves in contention for a podium. And, of course, important points for, well, all the Sim RC cars and, of course, uh, and of course the Pure Sims ones as well, even though they may be in different sister teams. Yeah, Ledger trying to make his way through here. He knows he cannot afford to give any points away, but Jürgen Frank is making his life really difficult there in that number 76 Sim RC car as well. And I tell you what, Jake Blackall in the number 97 Pure Sims Honda done a super job actually to try and haul in that leading group of Harrison Guinez and Savinovic because Blackall's got to try and get amongst them and start scoring some points. And uh, they, uh, well, now this is the, this is going to be telling Conroy, do the Sim RC cars trying to make a move here or do they stay in line and try and break the pack? Let's have a look as they come towards the end of that uh, of that straight. Of course, one point uh, four seven five kilometers um, all the way down from the final corner in towards uh, turn number one here at Fuji. No moves being made though by the Sim RC cars at the very front. Moves being made further down, however, as uh, we see Damien Owen Harris uh, getting himself down the inside of Jamie Rushworth there. So that's a position gained for the number fifty. The Fuji circuit very synonymous with sports car racing as well. Uh, still a very well thought of round of the World Endurance Championship. Can you imagine those old LN, well, those previous generation LMP1 hybrids gone red, opening up the full hybrid down that street? Oof, the, and then the braking force going into turn one. I mean, if, uh, Formula One car from 15 years ago as well. Wow. It's a really special circuit here as well. Oh, they've even got good uh, on-site catering. Leon as well, a healthy <laughs> catering for you as well. Lovely. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bowling on second, by the way. There's Dan Martin, who's gaining a position over Morgan Butler there. Wow, that's uh, that's the number 70 RD Sinsport car getting past the few awesomes of, of Morgan Butler there. Uh, Dan is, seems to be on a bit of a roll here. Um, he started in P10. He's got himself up into P8 now. He, he is, he's a man on a mission, and he wants this AM, AM class lead and win. Well, he might be getting a bit of a hand here as, uh, well, Frank and Stolzenberg, they're hitting each other quite consistently. Now, remember, folks, the drivers only have 17 iRacing incident points that they can accrue before taking a drive through penalty. So if they step over track limits, that's one incident point. If they spin, it's two. And if they hit each other with enough force, that's four. So they can accumulate quite quickly, but Dan Martin, he's wanting to get a move on. He knows he's got to score as many points at the moment. As things stand, he has a 14, he'll take 14 points out of Ben Gregory. Kind of needs more than that. Oh, that's a big oh. loop. Oh. 
Oh, Martin's still oh, on the fifth. inside. Frank to the outside of the corner. Stolzenberg loses out on the spot as well. Martin's trying to fight it out with Butler, who came back on all of them through that entire situation. He's going to be on the outside here. Oh, Dan swings it out and gets the back end out and then loses the position to Jürgen Frank there. That was a little bit chaotic on the way down in towards turn one. That is probably fair to say. Um, it was initially actually Stolzenberg that got into the back of Frank and then Fra and then Martin got into the back of Frank as well as they continued to battle on the live pictures. Yeah, I, I, I wonder there if uh, Dan Martin just yielded that position again, uh, trying to avoid a penalty quite possibly, but uh, nevertheless, Jürgen Frank is going by, but Dan Martin desperately trying to make a move. This is amazing stuff from the young class driver. Now, he does come into this race with a 123-point uh, disadvantage to Ben Gregory, so he needs to get the job done, but where's Gregory's dropping down the timing tower? Where is Ben Gregory in the, the boosted Veloster? Uh, he 26th, 26th for oh. Ben Gregory, our AM class leader in terms of points. Yeah, he does seem to have had a problem. Lots of uh, bits of battling here in the mid pack, that's for sure. Um, seems like they've uh, well spent the first half of this race and uh, with a pretty calm demeanor, and now uh, uh, on this lap on the previous one, it seems like the fights have uh, really, really started to develop. But here's what happens. Uh, to Gregory, that's in towards turn one. Oh, he just gets turned. Is that Rabier? Uh, possibly. The Elantra, I think. And that, that was Christmas Day there for Ross McFarlane, who went past both of them. He's up into 14th position. That's a great charge from the championship, uh, the defending champion, excuse me. Uh, 20 started right at the back, 28th on the grid, and has made his way up to 14th. But at the front, it's Kieran Harrison who leads then from Sevedovic. Gina is right there in the fight as well. And you have to say, Jake Blackhall, if he could just pull a couple more car lengths through this uh, through this infield, he'll be able to stay in touch with slightly faster cars on the straight line, Conry. But then on oh, the, the sweepy turny, twisty stuff, well, uh, it seems that Honda's got some brake. That's a technical term. Uh, the Japanese engineers say we need to get it good in the sweepy turnies, and that's where it is good. I'm going to steal that as a term now. Um, that, that's, uh, that's just too good not to steal. Um, but, uh, but yeah, of or course. <laughs> no, I'm not going to mock it whatsoever. I wouldn't be the kind of person that would mock something like that. Um, but <laughs> uh, Kieran Harrison leads the race, by the way, as uh, the 93. Uh, well, it's not definitely not the first time that we see a SMRC car lead uh, a race here in the uh, world. Uh, uh, in the World Touring Car Series, and definitely won't be the last. I get the feeling, at least as far as uh, um, the trend goes here at Fuji. But we're inside the second half of the race now, looking further back through the order. We've got ourselves a fight going on. There's uh, Stoltenberg in the background there, just briefly going wheel to wheel with uh, like Arabia, and now he's going to come under pressure from guess who? Ross McFarlane. <laughs> He slowly but surely worked his way from the back of the field and now he's knocking the door at least of the top 10. Yeah, fantastic stuff. And of course, by getting this far up the order, Ross McFarlane, again, the driver's, driver's title is going to be a big ask. But uh, that being in this position, it does mean he'll catch the reverse grid very likely. Uh, so he could then be in the position to score some great points in race two for the Pure Sims outfit. Of course, remember, only two... The best two out of the three nominated drivers for the point. So at the moment, that would be Jake Blackhall and Stain Ledger. But for SMRC, Kieran Harrison and Quarantine Guinness in first and third, they would be scoring points as well. So that gap is looking like it could come down here as well. That was uh, Solzenberg actually going a bit wide there. Solzenberg uh, under pressure from uh, McFarlane. Just seemingly telling at the moment. It's not going to get out of the way for it by any means. Uh, but McFarlane definitely looking very, very quick at this stage of the race. Oh, there's a little bit of front to rear contact through the corner there as well. There's Newman and uh, uh, Rabia having a bit of a squabble. McFarlane is through on uh, Stolzenberg as well. There seems to be in a, a bit of an issue. A little bit of uh, uh, white tyre smoke there in the background. But as these guys head their way in towards the final sector, it's uh, uh, still uh, a big, big gaggle as 
Rebia looking to the outside. Now looking to the inside of Pete Newman and drives it down in and hard. And position is complete as far as Rebia is concerned. That was aggressive, but in the end, worked. Yeah, it did. It certainly did. And then uh, Steen Ledger now is kind of in a bit of no man's land. He's got three uh, three seconds or so up towards his teammate Jake Blackwell. Now, back towards Jurgen Frank in six. As meanwhile, we've got a train taking a slightly alternative <laughs> route down the front straight here, almost in the pit wall. That's uh, Newman, Rapier, McFarlane in there as well. And maybe just ooh, moves Newman a little bit under the, the braking zone there as well. And McFarlane might try and pounce here in that white and yellow or white and sort of day green yellow Honda. Great shot. Oh, as Newman gets him right into the side there of Rebier and has to back out of it. And here comes Stoltzenberg now around the, around the outside. Stoltzenberg, he's definitely been involved in pretty much everything over the course of this one and continuing to fight it out with uh, McFarlane. I was going to appreciate this too much, but at least it gives some some, some good racecraft practice, I suppose. As uh, yeah, McFarlane he does gain the ground now and uh, uh, get himself clear, but he's going to straight, come straight back in three wide. Oh, that was optimistic by Rushworth down the inside there on his teammate. That wouldn't have exactly been ideal. Stoltzenberg and McFarlane they bang wheels. They get themselves into a bit of a tangle. McFarlane still got the overlap on the inside there. Oh, that could have ended in so many tears, but uh, thank the Lord for front wheel drive because you can just nail the throttle and the car comes back around. Yeah, I have to say it's, uh, it's a different Ross McFarlane we're seeing tonight. He's, you know, sticking it up the inside a lot more and taking on a lot more risky moves there. Probably because he maybe feels like he has to to try and keep the championship alive in any way. And yeah, it's just a slender gap there that he maybe wouldn't have previously gone for and he stuffed it up the inside there as well but got the got the move done for now but can he keep the keep the position here well Stoltzenberg he's he's bump drafting him all the way down this front straight Did he is Rabia getting himself uh, well down the inside and towards turn one there's also fighting further back uh, Palmer and Holman oh someone just got to hand that was Rushworth Rushworth got uh, a bit of a love tap from Rob Turner uh, down in towards turn one. It's triggered a bit of a chain reaction there as uh, Palmer, well, has Holman from following through in his tire tracks there. Um, Rushworth not going to be too happy uh, about that situation by any means. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we see that so many times though, down into heavy braking zone like turn number one. Sometimes the car behind just misjudges it and uses the car in front of them as a break. It's not, it's not how it's meant to be done, but sometimes that's our reality. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Well, if uh, if the if Guinness and McFarlane finished in the places they are right now, third for Guinness, twelfth for McFarlane, that would be enough to be champion. And for according to Guinness, I'm sure he's had nightmares this week of that horror show in Daytona where he was taken out of the race out of no fault of his own it cost him the championship well uh, it, this this season he's come back and he's just I mean he was always fast always brilliant and uh, come come back this year with just an unbeatable package brilliant in the race one on qualifying order superb in the reverse grid races and if the next three and a half minutes go to plan for the young Frenchman well I think Conrad we can safely say he's very well deserved this title Yep, I think so too. Um, it's uh, it, again, he has definitely been he has definitely been the standout performer. Meanwhile, we have uh, him on screen in the battle. That's uh, Savinovich actually coming, uh, uh, well, uh, fighting out, uh, fighting it out with him alongside. Um, Guinness you know, trying to go the long way around Whoa. here, and so oh, the left hand, uh, but just uh, about judges it correctly. That well, that could have gone either way, if you ask me. Long way around here, the long right-hander of 100R. And now we head our way down in towards turn six at the hairpin. Kina still has the overlap on the inside. There's a bit of leaning going on there. Savidovic pushed wide, um, but that's touring car action sometimes, I'm afraid. No, I think that's it. Kina is just playing a little bit of retaliation there because Savidovic has been big time. 
couple of corners before, but you do wonder, does Gaines need to... Maybe he feels like, you know, the, the championship is more or less sorted, so I can kind of race race free, and maybe that's what he's deciding to do, but uh, three goes. But maybe, I mean, obviously, this, there's, there's the, the uh, position in the team's championship is completely different. They've got time that they want, they've got points that they need to catch up. So perhaps he's thinking, no, I've got to get this second position. Meanwhile, Kieran Harrison, he's checked out, he's gone. Uh, at the front of the field in the uh, Atlanta, the number 93. So, can Gaines hold off Savidovic? And of course, that battling, look who's appeared in the background there, Jake Blackhall for Pure Sims. Yeah, this could be a, a good point scoring opportunity for Pure Sims because Sim RC have definitely run, run, run away with it here, at least uh, for race of one. Uh, Harrison and Gaines, P1, P2, and well, it's the top two in the team that score points here in this series. So, maximum points scored from race one potentially uh, for Sim RC if they're able to hold on to this P2 in particular but it's still a big unknown we know how aggressive Savinovich can be of course Blackhall not afraid of getting himself stuck in in that, Civ in that Honda Civic either so this one's going to be very interesting to watch folks as we look further back and that is Newman and McFarlane and also Stoltenberg as well yeah, McFarlane just sort of hit a bit of a roadblock there with uh, with Ray Bay, Stoltenberg, etc. To get a move and break away. Uh, it's been a good drive though from McFarlane, our, our uh, we think outgoing champion. He'll have to hand over the number one plate to Conte Guinness if they finish in this order. But I guess once that's kind of out of the way, Conte, it'll be a focus towards the team championship because Pearson's will they wanted to keep themselves on some silverware as oh this battle's still going on and Savinovic oh straight into the quarter panel there of Guinness now they've hit each other quite a few times they need to be careful on their incident points here comes Guinness once again oh Guinness with the up and under attempt but is it gonna be successful that's the big question not so at least in this instance, but time is running out and this is the final lap here at Fuji for race number one of our final race meeting of the season. We're riding on board here with Jake Blackall, who's been watching this battle from behind. They're heading their way out of the final corner now, down the front straight away. There's Kieran Harrison scoring maximum points from race number one across the line. Uh, Savinovic comes to take P2 and Quentin Guinness in P3, Blackhall P4. Meanwhile, there's a lot of drag races going on across towards the line. Ross McFarlane might have just about been able to steal away P number seven away from Loicrabia. That got a little bit too close for comfort there uh, towards the very end. Same with Craig Williams and Nick Libbins. Um, and potentially Neil Stevenson and Rob Sutherland as they are further back in the picture. Let's see what happens there. Sutherland's able to take it absolutely fine. Oh, there we go. We've got race one in the books here for our final race meeting of the season. It is Kieran Harrison that takes that race win, and it's a Sim RC P1 and 3. Both cars securely ahead of the Pure Sims uh, team. Uh, so it narrows the gap in terms of the team's championship. We'll give you an update on that as soon as we are able, but we've got to get ourselves a reverse grid for race number two. No full reverse grid this time around. It's going to be 14. So top 14 will be getting themselves uh, reversed around for the grid of race two, and that means that Jamie Rushworth starts on pole position for race two but here are the unofficial race results then Kieran Harrison takes the race win Wojciech Savinovic in P2 Corentin Guinez P3 and uh, well indeed that will mean I believe the points delta is sufficient enough back to Ross McFarlane that means that Corentin Guinez gets himself the pro championship win here in the world touring car series Congratulations to him. Of course, it's the provisional results and it needs to be confirmed by the stewards, but I see no reason why not. Uh, Jake Blackhall P4 with Steen Ledger in P5. Jürgen Frank in P6 with Ross McFarlane P7. Lloyd Carabia P8 with Konstantin Stoltzenberg P9. Dan Martin takes a much needed AM class win there in P10. Damien Owen Harris in P11 with Ben Palmer P12. James Holman P13 with Jamie Rushworth P14. 
Rob Turner and Harry Fox round out the top 16 cars. Uh, Yaroslav Seba at P17. Craig Williams, Nick Club and Sam Smith round out the top 20. And then our final uh, couple of cars. We've got uh, Marcel Fritsch, P21. Ben Gregory, not a great race number one, especially when our championship's on the line. That's uh, going to need require a bit of work uh, in race two and race three. Morgan Butler, P23, with Rob Sutherland, P24. Neil Stevenson, Scott Malcolm, Pete Newman, and Raphael Drash runs out the top 20 cars. So we have a 14-car reverse grid heading in towards race number two. That means uh, Rushworth and Holman will be our front row. But that was a very intriguing ra race to witness here, Peter. Of course, the, the draft block being oh so strong allowed for a lot of battles down in towards turn number one. But even that wasn't able to keep anyone close to Kieran Harrison, who got a 3.7 second gap at the very end. Yeah, get there. Um, yes, that most of that was due to the battles that Savidovic and Guinez had. However, even in clear air running, it seems like he was pulling away. Yeah, it's a really impressive run there from Kieran Harrison. And what about that battle between Savidovic and Guinez? I do wonder, Conray, was Savidovic being even more aggressive there, knowing that Guinez would probably back out because he had the championship to think about it? Only a thought, but uh, what can we say? I mean, Guinez, he did what he needed to do. Got some great points for his team and, most importantly, got that Drivers' Championship sealed up. Yep, indeed he did. And, well, it is the Triple Eight that takes the uh, the Championship uh, win in the Pro Class here. But we still got two other divisions to be concerned about. We've got the Am Class and, well, Dan Martin definitely put his uh, best foot forward here in this race. He was even improving positions, uh, at least in the early going, over some of the Pro Drivers. Um, so he's looking pretty, pretty good here heading into race two, especially given Ben Gregory, ben Gregory had that uh, issue that sent him further down the order. Another benefit for Dan Martin is that he's going to benefit from a reverse grid now. It could not have gone all that much better for him. It's, very, it's huge, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the championship gap between them is big, but... Uh, yeah, Dan Martin is doing everything that he needs to do. I mean, think how many top 10s he's had in these last couple of rounds of the season. Will he look back? Will his team look back on those early steps of the seasons where he was involved in a, a lot of accidents? Regardless of fault, that's not the, not the point we're making. But it was a lot of incidents at the start of the season that he was involved in. You've got to think he'll be ruining it at this stage, but he's doing everything to make up for it at this later stage of the season. Yeah, indeed he uh, he does, and well, it's um, I'm just waiting for the points to be confirmed as updated here. I believe they might be. Um, just having a little bit of a refresh of the spread trail. We'll get a confirmation of that. It depends how quickly that the, the race administrators can uh, uh, get that updated. And, uh, well, these are the updated ones, it seems. So, Corentin and Guinness there, 2251 is going to be enough uh, to take the pro class win here in the final race meeting of the season. So, we have our champion in the pro class, uh, McFarlane, second place with Steen Ledger in third that's not mathematically close enough to be able to change at this stage either so um those positions are very very secure indeed however one point between stoltzenberg and butler there we go there's one something to talk about for p5 yeah very close <laughs> very close there between stoltzenberg and 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 butler but yeah again is uh what a what a run it's been for him this season thoroughly deserved however the team championship, well, it's closed up very, very much. You I mean, we're, uh, by my calculations, yeah, there we Oh, they're correct. I'm amazed. Uh, 20, <laughs> 25 wow. points. Uh, yes, it's come down from 41 points to 25 points just in that race. So 16 points lost in that uh, race by Pure Sims Esports to DKC by Sim RC. Very exciting. The next two races are going to be great to watch. And that team dynamic is going to be important. Yeah, very important indeed. And well, there's uh, uh, again, it's going to be the one main, one of the main features that we'll be focusing in on uh, for the next two races. That can swing heavily one way or the other, uh, depending on the exact set of circumstances that we have. We also can have a look at the AM standings here as well. 
It's uh, a little bit closer. Maybe not as close as Dan Martin would really like it to be at this stage, but uh, every little helps, I suppose. Ben Gregory still leads that particular championship by 157 points. I'm reading it at the moment, but... Uh, the, 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 the thing to take note of here, uh, Peter, is that uh, our driver that takes no part, no part in the season, at least for the last couple of rounds, he went from third to sixth. Uh, so that means that Clibbons actually promotes himself up to a third place spot. He does, yeah. That's uh, that's good good stuff there by uh, by Nick Clibbons. And uh, yeah, a lot of stories of what could have been in the in the AMP class. But Ben Gregory, he's just hang, hanging on. In fact, by that... that by that measure he's getting incredibly close to to sealing up that am title so if all goes well for ben gregory in race two yeah mate that's that gap's bigger than i expected but it could be to do with drop scores possibly yeah possibly well we we shouldn't really be counting drop scores um in the final rounds but uh yeah we will get that uh, double checked and uh, make sure that uh, all the information is accurate but uh but yeah um it's 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 going to be very very interesting to see uh, how this one turns out, uh, especially in race two for the AM class, because we have uh, Dan Martin that's benefited from a reverse grid, but also Ben Gregory, who has to start roughly towards the back of the grid because of the incident they had in race number one. So uh, that one is going to be an interesting dynamic to observe over the uh, uh, over the next uh, 20 minute race that we have. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely something to look forward to, uh, but. Yeah, this is uh, you know this is where push comes to shove. Now this is where championships are won and lost. We've already had uh, it decided in pro class, but in terms of the teams, though, that's a different beast. And well, this is one of those circuits, Peter, where you can really help out teammates, can't you? You know, you can help them out with the draft coming down the pit straight. You can try and box in other drivers, not allow them anywhere to go. Um, you can actually do a lot of teamwork here. Yeah, you can. Yeah, particularly down that front straight, as you say. I mean, it's uh, yeah, they're really important. And you can also, you know, there's certain parts of the circuit where you can be quite tactical in how you race. If you've got two drivers on the same team racing against one driver who's kind of out there on their own uh, in that battle, it you can be a heck of a tactical uh, and just you know, not not do anything kind of dirty as such, but you can be really smart on where you position yourselves and that's where that communication comes into play the uh the teams are, are based in in voice rooms they keep in contact with one another they help ship the shore contact between uh between one another uh, that's something you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> have uh in 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 other in, in outdoor motorsport you might have communication back to the team or to your crew chief or whatever but uh, goodness me could you imagine that contact from car to car <laughs> teammates it would oh. be uh interesting Oh, imagine, imagine if we had car to car um, radio in F1, for example. Ma Malaysia um, 20, was it 2012? With um, <laughs> uh, Multi 21 with uh, Weber and Vettel. Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been a bit awkward to hear if we had a um, car to car in that instance. I mean, the, the entirety of the previous season. Uh, potentially as well would have been very very interesting it's just the, one of the wonders of sim racing i suppose that we have that available to, uh, available to us um but uh but yeah it's i think nascar actually do have some form of car to car um communication if i remember correctly i don't watch too much nascar to be fair um but uh i, I swear i've heard drivers talking to each other on there before someone could correct me if i'm wrong you correct me if i'm wrong on, on in the chat that's uh, that's fine uh, but we've got ourselves uh, around about four minutes before we get ourselves our second race underway here. And, uh, well, of course, you know, it was a relatively calm affair to the start, at least, of race one. However, around about that mid midway point, everyone decided they wanted to press their way forwards and, and uh, try and gain those positions. Of course, the reverse grid does complicate things somewhat here as far as race two is concerned. But do you feel that we're going to have a similar sort of start here, Pierre? I certainly hope so. Uh, it tends to be, I hate to say it, it tends to be a little bit more uh, chaotic, shall we say, in, in race two and three when you when you mix the order up and you shuffle that around. But let's see. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cars out there with a lot of access to grind, and people always wanting to get a uh, you know get a good result on the board before the end of the before the end of the season. 
Yeah, indeed. And uh, well, for some drivers, of course, you know, they, they, they may be so far down the order now that, you know, even uh, they are uh, not looking mathematically possible to really gain any positions um, uh, in this situation. It's it's just about the, the, the sake of completing the season at this point, like we talk about in 24 hour races, where it's an achievement just to get towards the end of 24 hours. It could be the similar sort of feeling for a lot of these drivers. It's just to, you know, get to the end of the season, just, uh, you know, just for the sake of saying that you had completed one. Yeah, you do also get a little bit of last last day of school syndrome where if there was someone <laughs> that you didn't like and you were, you know, it was the last day of school and you had the whole holidays to run away, you could just <laughs> spiff them straight in the nose and uh, it, you could probably get away with it a lot easier than you would in the middle of term. But this is the problem because I, I, I knew um, in the drivers' Discord they were talking about uh, trying to have penalties roll over into next season. <laughs> because, uh, um, the, yeah, because uh, of course, you know, if you get penalty points or whatever in, in this race, it don't really matter because there's no next race to get a back of the grid penalty or anything for. So um, you kind of understand it in, in that instance. Yes, I think, uh, well, might be an idea to, if you have points on your license as such, might be a good idea to carry it through to, to the following season because, yeah, it does mean that, the, and especially with championships on the, the line, it does mean that if people are a little bit more over-aggressive than normal, it can cause uh, it can cause problems. So let's see. Let's see how it goes. things go. Just a, a minute and 45 seconds to go before we grid up again. And it's game on. It's all about the, let's be honest, the pro... The Am Drivers Championship, mathematically or not, they're they're sealed really. Uh, it's all about this this team championship between two top line outfits, two of the best outfits in the iRacing platform in touring car competition. We've got them here in this championship, and let's see who's going to come out on top. Twenty five points in the context of the teams championship is nothing. Uh, absolutely, um, especially when you're talking about thousands and thousands of points. You know, just just a handful um, when we're talking about twenties. In it being in the twenties, there, um, yeah. one seventy so, is your maximum. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. that's the maximum score. So a pair race, and we've got two to go. Yeah, it's ba basically nothing, isn't it? Basically nothing between the two teams. And like you said, they're two juggernauts of uh, of touring car racing here on iRacing. You know, no matter what special event. Uh, you go into if it has TCRs in it, it's going to be these two teams that are going to be towards the very top of the order. I mean, we, we see that in in, uh, in the IMSA series as well because that has a TCR uh, uh, a category um, uh, for their esports side of things as well. So uh, always competitive, always getting stuck in. It's pure sim, sim RC. Basically, those two, along with a couple of guest appearances from a couple of other teams sometimes, and, and that's basically it. But they are going head-to-head -head here for these final two races, and that's going to be a whole bunch of fun because there's been no shortage of drama between these two through the season. No, no, it did get a little bit saucy at, at points. I think it was Road, at, uh, Road Atlanta, if I remember rightly, where it was a little bit of uh, controversy with team orders. Not necessarily if that I mean they we see them happen quite a lot, but it's hmm. the way of you know letting another driver through and then making a bit of a nuisance of yourself in that process. So, yeah, there was there's definitely is a, a, a needle between them and. Uh, that needle could be getting pretty sharp over the next couple of races. It's uh, what we've come to see. Yeah, it absolutely can. Well, we've got ourselves into the race session. The gridding is beginning. It is Jamie Rushworth in pole, on pole position with James Holman in P2. Ben Palmer will line up third with Damien Owen Harris in fourth. Daniel Martin will start from fifth with Konstantin Stoltzenberg in P6. Luke Rabia will start seventh with Ross McFarlane in eighth. We've got Jürgen Frank in P9 with Steen Ledger, P10. Jake Blackall, P11 with Krenzy Kines running at the top 12. Wojciech Sodovic and Kieran Harrison run at the top 14. Everyone else, well, they line up exactly where they finished in race one. Uh, you've got Ben Gregory there having to start from P22. Uh, of course, still relatively secure in terms of uh, his AM championship, but he, you, know, you, you still don't want to be having poor results here. Um, at the very end of the season, if you can at all help it, even if you are so far clear in terms of the absolute values. But we're about to go racing once again here in the World Touring Car Series at Fuji. It's a bit of a sluggish start from James Holman on the front row. Palmer might have an opportunity here on in towards turn number one to try and get this pass done going the long way around. 
going to require a bit of commitment on the brakes and on cold tyres. It's not necessarily uh, going to be the best move. There's a brief moment of three wides back in the pack. Becomes two by two as they exit out of that first corner and, and head their way down and through in towards the left at turn three. And, well, this gaggle of cars gets themselves a scrap on immediately. It is, it is uh, Damon Owen Harris, Ben Palmer, Stoltzenberg, Martin and McFarlane in the same postcode. Very much in the same postcode, in the same prefecture that we're going to use Japanese uh, ter terminology. Um, in fact, I didn't look up which prefecture Fuji's in. I mean, maybe it is, maybe it's, there is a Fuji prefecture, given it's in the shadow of Mount Fuji. Anyway. Oh, I've got it right here. It's the uh, the Shizu uh, Sh uh, Shizuoka prefecture. Oh, Shizuoka. There's a yeah. distillery in Shizuoka. Very famous one, too. Go. There you got, go. Uh, yeah. You're just a repository of facts. Um, yes. <laughs> I know the I know oh. the guy that owns Shizuoka Distillery. Ah, oh, that's where it is. Okay. Oh, Holman trying to get himself up into the race leads there. Rushworth takes it back, however. So after a bit of a sluggish, oh, they make contact coming off the corner. And now it's going to be Damon Noen Harris that Whoa. sent it down the inside oh. for P2 on the RDC Sport car. Oh, no, what has happened to your pro championship winner? Uh, I think Ross McFarlane would have hoped that would happen in race one rather than race two. Well, that ha that does have huge implications for the team's championship as well because DKC, Vice MRC have Kieran Harrison, Corentin Guinness and Damien Owen Harris. Now, their two top guns are Harrison and Guinness, and that's one of them out of the running for the big points. But here comes Damien Owen Harris. He's going to oh. do it on his own. Bang! Oh, that was a send and a lean off the corner. Oh, and oh that's in revenge. He gets turned by Jamie Rushworth. Oh, it ends in tears at the front of the field. Harris trying to get himself back on circuit. Oh, you can see that going. That was, uh, for me at least, a definite uh, response. And from your reaction there, Peter, I think you probably feel the same way as well. I do, and also I, I, I just put my tin hat on temporarily. Of course, Jamie Rushworth is, uh, is uh, although the car is branded Simlab, but is part of the Pure Sims umbrella. And oh, it's McFarlane nips his way into the lead. So all of a sudden, the momentum have race one. It was very much in the favour of Sim RC. Now the momentum going right back in the favour of Pure Sims. There's two of their drivers now in the top four. So they're set now to score a whole chunk of points so it's now down to Kieran Harrison where is he? He's back in 14th he's the next line of defence Yeah it's it's not been a, uh, a great event so far, uh, at least in race 2 for SMRC um, of course that <laughs> reverse grid do be like that sometimes it's The last 3.5 minutes it's gone to pieces Yeah, awful oh. Awful, and, and they, they did such a good job in race number one to try and close the gap, but now all of that work has basically been undone, basically because of this. Adrenaline fire. Oh, that's, that's the worst way to have it happen as well, isn't it? That's awkward. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, just just the uh, just, just that response needed. <laughs> it's probably fair to say. Meanwhile, all sorts of fights going on in towards turn one, and actually, Jurgen Frank has been punted out a little bit there. Loses a couple of positions to Arabia and and Ledger, more importantly as well, as far as um, the uh, CMRC outfit is concerned. So it's yeah, it's it's not looking like a very positive race too. Um, complete opposite here for Sim RC and, and Pure Sims laughing all the way to the to the bank at the moment. They certainly are, yes. And uh, but mind you, Jamie Rushworth has got a bit of a, a difficulty here with Loic Rebier uh, flashing his lights furiously at uh, Rebier. In fact, no, uh, yes, yes, no, excuse me. It was Stan Ledger actually who's having a problem with Loic Rebier right on behind him. And yeah, Black Paul trying to get his way up the order as well. Oh, it's Savinovich very deep on the brakes there, nearly runs into the back of Dan Martin. Yeah, Dan Martin again uh, attempting to go for a uh, an amp class uh, win, well at least another amp class win. But he was hoping for the championship, but that's looking 
mathematically unlikely, it is probably fair to say, unless Dan Martin somehow gets himself all the way towards P1 and Seth Gregory falls a little bit further away uh, from P18. That's when we can start talking about it perhaps a little bit more seriously. But uh, Kieran Harrison getting the pass done on Jake Blackall there. Um, again, this, these are the little point swings in terms of team's championship that will matter. But I think Tim are losing so much from this race already that uh, they're, they're definitely on the book back foot and trying to chase all these positions back. Yeah, they're in, they are in a bit of trouble here at RCMRC, but in regards to the team's championship, they could have really done with catching some more points on Pure Sims. And here comes Black Call on Harrison. No, just ducks out of it at the last moment there, does the Pure Sims Honda driver. We'll have to go back to it, but right up at the front, McFarlane leading the way. Uh, but he does have the attention of Konstantin Stolzenberg and James Holman as well, also very quick. So he won't have it all his own way, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely not. So, uh, again, lots of places to look at if you want to find some action here at the, uh, well, penultimate race of the season. This is Jamie Rushworth versus Lloyd Rabia on the way through the left there. And Rabia, look at how close he's following coming off the corner. That's a good run for Rabia, but around the outside, that's uh, at these little right-hand pinks is not really going to help as they're heading their way down in towards turn 10. A big gesture to the inside for Rabia, but that's a little bit too far back uh, into Dunlop. And, uh, well, he's going to have to try and live and fight another day and uh, potentially get himself the slipstream down in towards turn 1, which would be a bit of a better option. Yeah, always, uh, always a chance to, to make a move down there, but you've got to make sure that it's it's clean, though. I mean, look at Damien Owen Harris. That, that definitely uh, caught him out just a little bit too much contact, and, of course, that sparked a response, as we saw. Uh, oh, Savinovich makes a move there up the inside of Dan Martin. Good stuff there. Uh, Dan Martin, though, definitely mixing it up there with the... Uh, with the pro drivers as well, I'm sure he'll be very pleased about that. Might even see them see him in the pro class next year because he looks very strong here. He does. Uh, Harrison actually getting himself a run off uh, at least on Savidovic here in towards turn one. Savidovic didn't get any sort of draft whatsoever. We're going to go three wide in towards turn number one here and they come together on the inside. Dan Martin's been able to avoid all of it and comes back in and keeps those positions. But that was over eager. Three wide into the heavy braking zone there. You're carrying so much speed there down on the inside that it, there's always going to be an accident one way or the other. Yeah, it's, I mean, we see it at uh, turn one of the Nürburgring Grand Prix track as well. It's uh, so you're going from, I mean, especially here, you're going from the very top of top gear down to what is, I guess, a first, probably second gear hairpin, very tight corner down to turn one. And yeah, it's, it, it's it, yeah, you're always, with a creating distance that long, you're always going to get disparity. I guess for, in one way, it does make for pretty good racing, gives good opportunity to make overtakes. This is Lagrabia and Jamie Rushworth, wheel to wheel once again. Rushworth up all over the curbs to try and keep himself in contention here. I guess that is one strategy, as long as you don't get an instant point or a slowdown penalty. But Rabia is going to fight back at him uh, through the left here. And, well, look at that. Frank stuck it down the inside of the Pure Sims car. And now Jürgen Frank's going to stick it around the outside of the PGZ. That, this is a good sequence of corners here for Jürgen Frank. If he can cut back to the inside now, then he might get it. But Jamie Rushworth sticks his nose in there. He's going to stick it down the middle three wide. Oh, the all just about back out of it. It gives the run to Harrison now uh, from behind. Down the pit straight. This is the point where you do not want to have to tap the brakes to avoid an incident. And that's exactly what happens. So who's going to win this Talladega style drag race down towards turn one then as well? Oh, it's all shuffling about quite untidily. They're going to go four wide on the brakes, surely. Oh, they somehow get through without contact. Amazing. Absolutely amazing there. Yeah, it's incredible. It's still two by two, though. It's uh, Lloyd Gravia and Kieran Harrison that are the ones uh, in with the overlap at the moment. Steen Ledger behind them in the pure sims. Oh, come on, give each other room, guys. I think they just about do on the exit of the corner there. Rabia is, is trying to defend these positions. Uh, it's such a um, stark way here at the moment, and he's actually doing relatively well at it. 
Uh, Harrison has yet, been, yet to been able to find a way through. Same with uh, Ledger as well. There's battling going on behind this as well as Sivinovic comes back on San Martin. That's uh, Ding Dong round number two, at least as far as those two are concerned. Three wide now. Three wide into the breaking zone for the right and, well, through the middle sector. This is going to get a little bit sketchy. There was a little bit of door banging and Ledger turns Harrison. Oh, drama between the Pure Sims and SimRC once again, and that's another bunch of SimRC points lost. Well, well, well. Yeah, that is controversial to say the least. It'd be interesting to get a look at it from Stain Ledger's point of view, because it's interesting to see if there was the option to back out or not. And yeah, Harrison definitely coming off worse there. Let's get a look there. So there's Ledger in the 85. That's cool. Yeah, you've got to give room. You have to anticipate, you know, that uh, just keeping the gas in and hoping for the best is, isn't correct, I don't think. I get the feeling the stewards will be busy after this event. I mean, they always are at the end of a final round, so it's probably fair to say in most series, but this one, yeah, that's definitely going to be uh, looked at. and. Well, if they can't apply penalties for the next race because there's next race, maybe they'll have to buy in race penalties. But there's the replay of it. A bit of a banging of doors there. And then... Yeah. Well, I'm not entirely sure where the, the Pulsive Scar was really meant to go there, apart from slamming on the anchors, potentially. I, I don't know. I can see it from both ways. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But it's, I think you've, you've, got to, you've got to yield at, at a point. Uh, where if you can see an accident coming, don't just keep your foot in. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I do think there was potential, there was an opportunity there to avoid that accident. Um, but there we go. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a difficult one for the, the stewards to handle, to be quite honest. Because uh, yeah, that's, how do you un how do you unpick that in terms of the the points cha the teams championship is so so tight, and how do you apply penalties? How do you uh, if you do apply penalties, how do you... And, of course, you can't bring points back. You know, Kieran Harrison's not getting any points back. He's now right down the order. He is. So, yeah. But anyway, I'm just looking forward to the Discord chat after, <laughs> after this. That's all I'm saying. What's that could be the DVD, but DVD extra bonus content. Uh, Peter <laughs> Connery commentate on the virtual paddock conversation. Oh my god, we should get Hugo to like screen capture the Discord and then we'll, we'll commentate on that. There we go. Awesome. Uh, but <laughs> seven minutes to go in race two. We've got another race after this one, believe it or not, as well. So lots more action to come. So Vidovic trying to improve position once again. This, uh, this battle between himself and JB Rushworth has been great uh, over this, this entire second race. So Vidovic sends it down the inside. So does Dan Martin, actually. Dan Martin looking to try and gain himself the position here. He started fifth place and hasn't really slid that far down the order, all things considered. He's had a, an absolutely brilliant uh, event here at Fuji so far. Looking to try and capitalize on this one. It, it may still not, well, probably still won't be enough uh, as far as the championship is concerned for Dan Martin, but uh, at least he's given it a very good go. He has given it a very good go. I'll tell you who else has given it a very good go is the Frank Bila of WTCS, Craig Williams in the sole Audi. He's there in 11th position. There he is in the white, blue and red machine, the old Audi. And yeah, our very own Frank Bila fighting away at the front in that venerable machine. And it, it takes a man of confidence to race a car with his face painted on the side. Yes. It, it, it really does. I, I personally wouldn't. Uh, I, I personally be. I, I, I have a face for radio. Likewise. But, you know, because this is esports, we have to be on camera. So, <laughs> so there we go. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but there's Craig Williams in the uh, very, very handsome man indeed. But uh, stuck in a bit of a train here at the moment in that lone Audi, and is going to send it down the inside quite aggressively there on Steen Ledger. They're just going to try and come back him, but come back at him off the corner. It does have the momentum to do so. But that was a wide open door for that Audi to try and uh, sling it down the inside there. There's a bit of uh, door rubbing coming down the pit straight there. And well, Williams wanting to give himself a little bit more room. And they get slightly close once again across the grid spots as well. So 
Uh, they're just teasing with it here, I suppose. But Williams actually gaining ground on the way in towards turn one. Ledger later on the brakes, though. Let's see what happens here. If give up, well, Ledger gave him gave Craig Williams plenty of space out there to try and get that corner right. And well, Williams still has a slight overlap, I admit. Uh, so he might still be able to make something of this one inside here for turn three. Compromised line for the both of them allows Rob Turner to pile on into the back. This is Williams right out wide a little bit there. He's going to get freight trained here if he's not careful. Had to run right out over the top of the cab and ooh, just fits up back up the inside there. The 48 of Turner, second of the AM class as well. So good run for Turner. And he can see the AM leader, Dan Martin. There he goes in the black and pink Hyundai. So well within touch here as well. But super racing. It's a, what a great addition this has been to the iRacing simulator, Conray. It really does provide some good racing. Good choice from the organizers to have this for our finale, too. Yeah, it, it's got everything, isn't it? Long straights, heavy braking zones, sweeping corners that, that also do allow you to sling it down the inside sometimes. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, track to, uh, to watch racing because there are a good couple of opportunities that the drivers can take to, uh, to get themselves at least alongside. And this one of the big, inviting, wide open right hander and uh, Craig Williams goes for it um, and, well, kind of gets bullied out there by Rob Turner. And, well, Williams is going to lose a bit of ground here. He's dipped back in the slipstream to try and gain some of that back, however. Going towards the pit wall to try and keep the place here is Turner, forcing Williams to go the out to the outside through turn one. But Williams, oh, 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 giving the squeeze a little bit. Another little tap on the way down in towards the braking zone for those two. A bit too close for comfort, you have to argue, but again, Williams around the outside, and again, Williams uh, kind of struggling with the exit of these corners, and, well, Butler's now got himself involved. Yeah, it is a bit of a melee here, isn't it, as well as oh, Butler has to get best there too. Williams, no problem, just ahead there for Turner, just a little bit of chirp of uh, tire smoke coming out there as well, and that could give that, could that give Williams a little run here as well? He's getting close in that Audi. And you don't want to pick, oh dear. Like I say, you don't want to pick a fight with that Audi. It's built of tough stuff. Oh yeah, you really don't. <laughs> it's definitely uh, built like a tank is that, is that car. However, um, uh, Craig Williams did mention um, that he did sustain a little bit of damage in that first race, which is, uh, well, he said why, the, why he was not so competitive. Oh, something big's happened at the very front there in amongst the, uh, the pure Sims cars. They kind of, uh, well, it was Blackall getting into the back of Dan Martin, actually, that triggered all of that. But Dan Martin keeps himself ahead, uh, despite the entire situation. Yeah, just uh, just about. I tell you, Black, Jake Blackall's got to be the danger man here as well, that number 97 car, trying to score the points for Pure Sims. And uh, Ledger there, too. Oh, bang! Blackhall will talk about the danger man just slam straight into the rear of Dan Martin there. Yeah, Blackhall does feel like uh, he has been the one of the more aggressive drivers, um, uh, at least uh, for this season. And uh, well, we're getting on to a lot. We are actually on the final lap here uh, of this event, side by side on the way down in towards uh, uh, down in towards there between Jurgen Frank and Savidovich. Uh, again, Savinovich getting getting himself stuck into everything here. He's up seven positions on the day in race two, looking to try and make it eight positions. But Frank's going to give him, uh, uh, going to uh, try and push him for it, basically. Basically, um, Savinovich, long right hander. Not much you can do here apart from just get yourself tucked in. Maybe you have that opportunity available down into this section, and he has got it himself towards the outsides there. In towards turn six, now out of turn seven, uh, Svidovic has the overlap still. Coming through turn eight, he's able to crack open the door and make a fight of this one. Frank, let's see what he's able to do from an outside position on in towards turn ten. You can take the differing lines through here and try and launch yourself off the complex. And well, Svidovic has really positioned his car in the right place, but. Frank has been able to get himself to the inside here through the uh, final uh, sector. This is a great battle going on for P5 between these guys now. Ten seconds left on the clock. Ross McFarlane 
uh, will soon head his way uh, towards the line uh, and potentially take this race win. He's given a good run by Stoltzenberg, actually. Stoltzenberg has really closed up on him here on the final lap, but it's going to be too little, too late for Stoltzenberg, as it is Ross McFarlane heading his way across the line to take the race win, but we're going to get a photo finish, potentially, between Jürgen Frank and Wojciech Savidovic as they head their way towards the finish line here. Who is going to get it? It is Jürgen Frank that gets the position. Remains P5, Savidovic P6. That was very close. Going to have a little bit of a look at the gap between them. It was uh, less than a tenth, at least. Oof. Brilliant stuff there from all the drivers. That was fantastic racing. It's Craig Williams. He's, oh, he's got off for a bit of a Jim Cannon there <laughs> into the gravel trap. Uh, but, oof, yeah, Dan Martin winning in the AM class and Ross McFarlane just reminding, okay, it's not going to be his championship this season, but uh, just reminding his credentials. Yeah, absolutely. Picks up another race win. Like you said, not the championship, of course, but it's uh, it's a decent consolation prize, uh, at least if you ask me. But what is going to be our final reverse grid here of the season? And it's going to be a low one. It's going to be the lowest that we have on the wheel. It is P12 reverse grid here. So that is, it means that... Well, it's Kieran Harrison getting himself a pole position oh. for race three. That one is a bit of a lifeline for Sim RC. But it is Ross McFarlane that takes the race win in race two with Constantin and Stoltzenberg P2. James Holman P3. Great podium finish for the RD Sim Sport car. We've got Luke Rabia in P4, Jürgen Frank P5, Wojciech Sodovic in P6 with Jamie Rush with P7, Dan Martin takes another AM class win in P8. We have Steen Ledger P9, Rob Turner P10. Craig Williams P11 and Kieran Harrison P12. So it's uh, Kieran Harrison, Craig Williams front row uh, for race three, our final race of the season. Yaroslav Sebula in P13 with Morgan Butler P14, Pete Newman P15 with Harry Fox, Stephen Owen Harris, Ben Gregory, Nick Clibbons, and Marcel Fritsch rounding out the top 20 cards. Then we've got Rob Sutherland, Sam Smith, Neil Stevenson, Jake Blackhall, Scott Malcolm, Corentin Guinez, P26 here in race two. Yes, he has the championship on lockdown, but he was still competing for decent points for his team in the team's championship. Ben Palmer in P27 with Raphael Jarge rounding out the 28 uh, finishers here in race two. But we've got one more to go here, Peter. Just one more race in this season of the World Touring Car Series here on iRacing, on Racebot TV. Ah, it's kind of a shame to really be wrapping up one more, uh, just for one last time. It is, it is, but uh, the drivers are putting on quite a show for us this uh, this evening. It's been fantastic to watch, um, some great storylines, and well, it, it all when the momentum looked like it was swinging towards Sim RC in that fight for the team's championship, well, it couldn't have really gone an awful lot worse that race in terms of the team's championship, so what will happen in race three? It's going to be a big ask. Uh, for them to to catch up now as well but we'll see and we'll see who got, comes out on top kieran harrison starting on pole position that certainly puts him in a good a good place to uh, get a last win on the board and i do think and from what i could just peek my eye down into the virtual paddock i think there's some quite unhappy drivers because there was a few <laughs> bits of contact which resulted in some drivers dropping down the order but we'll see how that shakes out yeah, um, <laughs> there was one. There's one message in there. I won't, won't say by who and directed towards who, but there's just question marks <laughs> spread across the screen. Uh, so you, you can um, you, you can use your judgment as to as to what that that was about. But uh, but yeah, again, a lot of frustration. A lot more action here in this uh, second race. A lot more contact as well. A lot of uh, running into the back of people in in these heavy braking zones. The uh, uh, the turning across the nose as well, uh, uh, not really wanting to give a lot of room on the exit of the corners. Um, it is, like you said, uh, it feels like a uh, like the last day at school for these guys, uh, knowing that things necessarily won't be uh, uh, penalised as harshly because, of course, you know there's no uh, there's no post race uh, sort of next race penalty. Yeah, I do think that's definitely playing a factor, uh, and it might be something that they organizers will have to discuss whether 
they carry the the, the penalties through to the next season mm -hmm. or not whether you have a license which you acquire points on of course a lot of the drivers you know in in uh, world touring car series they will compete in the world gt championship as well on mm -hmm. uh, on monday nights as well and and i know that it's something that the the, the spirit of competition is something and that the sporting product is something that the organizers take really seriously so it, it could be something a, a, a well worth looking at because you know that you always do get trends you get cars that are in more accidents than others and there's always reasons for that you know so sometimes it's just a string of bad luck but most of the time there is a general theme behind it so uh it could be that there's there's ways to look at that and how that's most uh, most applicable and most fair uh, going forward or, or there's also a third option that you're just a bad driver and that would what qualifies me um <laughs> well i would definitely yeah i would definitely have the the l plates on the back yeah yeah, uh, yeah definitely but uh you know of course these 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 drivers are not gonna gonna qualify as that um given that uh, they are uh, some of the fastest drivers in tcr at least uh, on i racing and uh uh, are definitely not amateurs by any means even though we have an am class uh, even like most of the am drivers will be able to uh um finish in the top couple of positions of any irising official races so it's um uh, so it's definitely am in the context of this race but um, of, of the season excuse me uh but we we've got one more to go here another 20 minute race and of course you know given that it was getting quite dark at the end of that race too i get the feeling that it's going to be a bit of a night race here at fuji to fin finish things off what better to get the final race of the season going on well not quite under the lights here but definitely with the headlights illuminating things here uh, at fuji uh, i, I re potentially recall that the same was the case at daytona for the end of last season yes it was yeah under the under the floodlights there at daytona international speedway it was a certainly a dramatic uh, finale that's for certain <laughs> uh, in the inaugural season of the world touring car series it's great that the tcr category has been so invigorated over the last year or so uh, both by this championship and by the, the choice of vehicles available on the iRacing service. I mean it, it, just a year ago I think we, we, we had just the Audi uh, and then all of a sudden we, we, we had the Honda and we had a, a Hyundai and then another Hyundai so well, it's fantastic how I tell you what they must work hard in those uh, in those offices at the iRacing simulator to scan these cars and which often requires a little bit of air miles to go and actually physically scan the cars physically scan the tracks i do think we take it for granted occasionally uh if i if i could be allowed to say that i think the level of content that's generated is uh is quite something and the detail that it is and uh, yeah what a what an era to to be living in in terms of virtual motorsport it's fantastic yeah i mean you remember when car manufacturers will always sign exclusive deals to certain games and certain platforms i mean porsche famous for it of course and uh you know now you've got so many different manufacturers dipping their dipping their toes in into pretty much anything and actively coming to iRacing and say oh do you want to actually come and stand on our cars because it also you know that that basically used to be the other way around it would be iRacing going out and, and trying to find customer teams that would let also let them scan the the, the car with the manufacturer's permission and now it, especially after the whole um uh, the whole pandemic um it, it's it's these teams and these uh, manufacturers coming to our racing to get their cars scanned so it's kind of it's kind of been flipped on its head there somewhat oh it has no doubt about it and you think about it i mean did i i was shocked the day when it was announced that we would get the corvette c8r on mm -hmm. uh, on i racing now why is that particularly exciting well you know of course the company that build the corvette racing cars pratt miller have you know they have a lot of quite secretive uh, operations in other uh, parts of uh, parts of manufacturing and defense aerospace etc and obviously their facility is highly highly secretive so mm. uh scanning the car is uh, is was was a no-no but to get that over the line and to bring that car to the service was a huge achievement for everyone concerned for corvette for i racing for everybody it was really really cool and uh, yeah brilliant that we uh, brilliant we had that and i mean that was one day that was pretty cool but the day when I, when not kill was confirmed oh i was uh, i was a happy boy that day have been since
Yep, absolutely. And, uh, well, we'll get ourselves, uh, hopefully, at some point, we'll get ourselves a little bit of an update with the points. I'm just refreshing the spreadsheet just to see um, if uh, anything has changed in that department. And I believe it has. At least I've seen the uh, the, the team points have uh, been updated. And it's not fantastic news um, if you're a Sim RC. But, yeah, here's the, uh, the the pro points as they stand. Of course, we weren't expecting that to change, really. is Kronta Guinez that takes the, uh, the championship win. Uh, at the end of the day um, but in terms of the battle for the back though um, it is uh, Ledger third place we got uh, Sividovic in fourth with Stoltzenberg in fifth with Butler in sixth that's still uh, relatively close between those guys but realistically Stoltzenberg and Butler are the only ones close enough to really threaten uh, changing positions here um, coming towards the end of the season. Potentially even Rushworth in there as well, uh, but things have definitely settled down in the pro class. They have a little bit, yes, uh, they have. And uh, we're at the team championship, by by my reckoning, I mean, 69 points now is the gap between... Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, 60... Uh, yeah, 69 points between them at this stage. And that's going to be a big ask. Um, that's going to require two huge finishes from Sim RC in a poor uh, race for pure Sims. So let's see what happens there. But I do believe at the AM points, Conroy, we might be ready to announce our provisional AM champion. Yes, we are. Here we are. It's uh, above the maximum points you can get in one race now is the gap between Ben, ben Gregory and Dan Martin. So it is, it is Benjamin Gregory that takes the AM class season win in the World Touring Car Series for this season. So congratulations to the boosted motorsports driver there. Uh, we've got Nick Clibbins, uh P3 as well. And uh, he's, uh, well, I was going to say relatively score on P3. He's not because Harry Fox is very much hot on his heels there um, in fourth place. The Belfort P3 in Am standings might be an interesting one uh, to look at towards the very end of uh, not, uh, well, this se this season, this race weekend, and of course this upcoming race as well. Uh, of course, drivers further down the order, Schlacker sliding that to P6. Sean Gardner might have the opportunity to get past Schlacker in this one as well, given a decent set of results. And uh, of course, Rob Sutherland there down at the very bottom, rounding out the top 10 in terms of the AM points standings got ourselves about two and a half minutes to go here before we get the gridding procedure underway for our final race of the season i'm very thankful you're able to join us for this one and uh, well it's been a, a bit of a wild ride since the since the very start of the season where we had a little bit of a habit of having uh, chaotic starts uh, shall we say but we got those irons out we got some fantastic racing here in these touring cars we've had two brilliant races here at fuji uh, to try and finish off the season we've got one more to go and well uh, my message to the drivers is make let's make this a good one i think it will be you can you can guarantee that as well and the question is as well will kieran harrison be able to make a breakaway early getting that launch just right getting through turn one clean that's going to be his big concern here as well hoping he doesn't get any contact from the back or what have you but if kieran harrison can get through that opening kind of sector clean then we know how quick he is uh, and we know how uh, consistent he can be so let's see and really that's Harrison his job is to win this race uh, and get those maximum points on the board for for SMRC and hope that his teammate Quarantin Guinez can get up there and score some big points and then it's in the lap of the gods what pure sims do in, in terms of their results. Well, if there's one driver you want to rely on gaining positions, you bet. <laughs> you know, there's the there's no not many other good options than Corinthian Guinness. So uh, they've de it's definitely a possibility for Simrc. It is a, an outside chance. It's probably fair to say they will probably even say that as well. Uh, but never say never when it comes to motorsports. Never say never when it comes to sim racing, esports whatsoever. So uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But it is getting relatively dark out there uh, at Fuji. The track temperature 21 degrees, basically equal to ambient there uh, at 20. We're going to be racing into the darkness for our final race of the season in the World Touring Car Series. We're 30 seconds away from getting our gridding procedure underway. Of course, it was our smallest reverse grid that we have on on offer um, here for this one and you know what I'm gutted about Peter? 
Go on, tell me. We, we, we didn't get a full reverse grid for the entire season. Ah, uh, just have to come back next season, Conroy, and uh, we'll uh, get it eventually. Yeah, we we, 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 we kind of have to. We have, have you got a to. klaxon? Have you got a klaxon ready? I think we need to have some sort of sound oh, effect or, yeah. or a, a, <laughs> an alarm that goes off. It is. It's like oh. warning. I'll have to connect my old soundboard and just... Uh, I, I'm not like uh, Paul, for example, who has a oh. Go XLR and just push the buttons, but... Uh... His soundboard's amazing how he can just <laughs> hit buttons out of nowhere and it comes out with this. I love the one where he's like, no swearing. <laughs> no, 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 no swearing indeed. It is indeed a rule. But uh, we got ourselves the uh, starting grid for our final race of the season. It is Kieran Harrison on pole position with Greg Williams. The Frank Beeler of the World Touring Car Series gets onto the front row once again. Rob Turner in P3 with Steen Ledger P4. Daniel Martin P5 with Jamie Rushworth in P6. Wojciech Sverdovich in P7 with Jürgen Frank P8. Luke Rabia P9. James Holman P10. Constantin Stoltz and Big P11 with Ross McFarlane running out the top 12. Everyone else lines up exactly where they finish. Seb Beeler, Butler, Newman, Fox, Harris and Gregory round out the top 18 cars. And then you can look further back. Blackhall there, starting for P24. So look to him as one of your big movers, potentially, in this race. Malcolm Guinez there in P26. Let's see what was basically a last-to-first challenge, except run one row further forward for Corentin Guinez. We've got ourselves our final race of the season. Underway here at Fuji. It's a good start from the second row, though. Rob Turner getting himself alongside and, a, and directly ahead of Craig Williams here. Yes, Dean Ledger getting himself uh, towards the inside as well. Down in towards turn number one. Hard on the brakes. Down into there goes Ledger. He gains the position over Williams. Williams has been completely swamped there in that Craig setup, setup shop. Audi losing a good couple of positions off the start, but keeps himself in the race most importantly and doesn't have a big accident in towards the first turn. Speaking of big accidents, Though. Oh, that could have so easily have been one with James Holman, but somehow he gets away with it. Oh, that could have been huge there for James Holman. Yeah, lucky not to end up in a big pile up there, but Kieran Harrison has done exactly what he needs to do from the front of the grid. He's got away with a good gap now with a couple of cars behind him. It's, oh, it's a big muscle through. Who was that muscling through? It was one of the RD Simsport cars. Dan Martin, I think. Holman. Uh, uh, was it? It was kind of one of the black and pink RD Simsport machines. No, it wasn't. That was Holman trying to get his way back up again. Goodness me. Well, Dan Martins, he's further up the order in fifth place. But, uh, yeah, Harrison, great stuff. The, the, the danger he has is Dean Ledger in third. He really needs to try and make that break early and try and get away as quick as possible. Oh, there's a Contact lot there of... For... I was going to say, there's a lot of door banging and bumper barging on the way through this mid-pack is actually crazy to see but Ben Gregory's involved in the thick of things Sebula as well <laughs> it gets so close coming off the corner but they are all able to get through unscathed uh, so surprising oh I must have spoken too soon a couple of cars going off there Blackhall Clibbons and there was Clibbons' teammate as well that can be Sam Smith uh, 27 Oh, another car off in the background as well. One of the Pure Sims cars. I think it's oh, Black Hole. Yeah, so he's pulled pulled out. So, oh, but here comes Stain Ledger. Now, this is critical for Ledger. A lot of cars coming down pit lane with problems uh, as Ledger does get the move done just on Rob Turner. So he moves up into second place. But already, Harrison's opened up a 1.1 second advantage. This is going to be a big, big ask for Stain Ledger to get on the case of the Sim RC drive. Big ask, not impossible, no. but he needs to get going now. Run those qualifying laps in clear air and try and close in that gap. At least try and get himself within slipstream range so he can have a say at it. But uh, we're on boards here with Daniel Martin, who's uh, uh, definitely been one of our uh, one of our great performers uh, here today, today in the Amplas. He got himself uh, two Amplas wins already looking for the third as he's got Rob Turner directly ahead of him and uh, well Rob is currently preoccupied actually we're trying to get past Hoodovich yeah whoa, he certainly wow well, that's what the inside of a <laughs> Hyundai Elantra looks like wow that was close oh so so tight there as well as they carry on through Savidovich charging through the pack is he the danger man for the race win maybe well again they're losing time hand over fist to Harrison he's opened up a gap in two seconds already pity for Craig Williams 
for our very own Frank Baylor, second on the grid, back in sixth at the moment, so it wasn't quite able to convert on that front row grid spot. Dan Martin and Rob Turner, of course, this is the battle for the AM class as well, but Dan Martin definitely been the standout driver so far in that as, oh, Damian Owen Harris, another off-track excursion, not been his night. Not at all. Down the pit straights, the front of the field comes, though. Rob Turner versus Dan Martin potentially might happen in towards turn number one. We're seeing Savidovic stepping out as well, trying to get himself alongside and past Steen at Ledger. Is there opportunity for Ledger to come back out off the corner? Don't think so. Meanwhile, further back, there's uh, Rushworth and Stoltzenberg, the, uh, um, the, the, the Pure Sims and the, and the PGZ cars uh, going wheel to wheel, which is uh, great to see. They're able to get themselves through single file now after uh, after Rushworth um, kept that position on the lockdown. Further forwards, though, you've got the battle for the Am class leads. It is Dan Martin versus Rob Turner swapping positions on your timing screen. And you can see them swapping positions on the live pictures. Turner keeping himself ahead for now, but Martin does get the line off the corner here uh, through the exit of turn seven. Now through turn eight, in towards turn number nine, which is uh, 300R here at uh, Fuji. The Japanese do like their number plus R names, dictating the radius of the corner. Um, so, uh, but <laughs> that's by the by. And Rob Turner keeps himself ahead now, keeps the AM class uh, lead. Yeah, he does. Great stuff from Rob Turner, not letting Dan Martin get the get the better of him. Uh, always thought it went to, of course, the radius, because, of course, 130R, it's uh, Suzuki, it's a left-hander. You think, why is it not called 130L? But no, that, may, that of course, makes sense. It's the radius of the corner. That is very Japanese, isn't it? Fantastic. I do like Degner 1 and Degner 2 as well, named after an East German motorcyclist. Well, there we go. Um, again... Uh, dropping all the facts oh, I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the full story on. after Conry it's a good bedtime oh, lovely, story for you lovely um, <laughs> yeah but uh, oh, corner, corner names we're on the corner names already um, but uh, <laughs> uh, but it's interesting to uh, yeah the, 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 the system here in Japan is quite interesting with the, with the whole R's uh, situation um, you've got a few at Motegi as well there's, there's also the uh, oh, there's also the three wide out there on circuit with Pete Newman in the middle of all of it as well. There we go. So, the team championship, it's oh, it's sort of in the hanging in the balance this race with Harrison, of course, leading for some RC, but his teammate Guinez is back in 12th, whereas Pearson Stain Ledger is the leading Pearson's driver in third, with his teammate McFarlane in ninth. So it's sort of sort of even Stevens at the moment and for Pearson's so that's what they want to hear because they've got the big lead they've got 69 point lead coming into this race indeed well uh, Pete Newman here in the number 58 car let's see what uh, his situation is well he's just had Morgan Butler come past him in the other Pure Sims uh, car Pure Sims development uh, for Morgan Butler uh, well, definitely hasn't uh, uh, definitely has been uh, punching above his weight, uh, so to speak, in the season so far. I remember early on in the season when he got uh, a surprising result. I, I believe it was at Donington, and uh, you know thought that he, he couldn't, um, he wasn't expecting to finish that far up the order uh, in this season. But he, he, after that, he, he was pretty consistently up there, wasn't he? Yeah, and I think it was we we had him uh, we had him on for interview er, 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 last week. I think it was Morgan Butler, and he said uh, he was meant to be in the full uh, the full team, but then moved into the academy team. And uh, he says he quite likes the paint scheme, so it's quite he's good. He doesn't mind being in the academy car with the with the the cool paint scheme on that machine. Damien Harris, he's trying to fight his way back up again in the uh, SMRC Manatee uh, Veloster. He's actually the third man in the team with Harrison and Guinez, and. Is he going to make another dive up the inside here? In looks like he's got most of the job done before he even hits the braking yeah. zone. And oh, he's got it all, all wiggly there, but gets the move done as well. Two cars for one. Good stuff there from Damien Owen Harris. Yeah, I've definitely been, uh, uh, I was going to say been in the thick of things here, but it seems like a lot of the... Uh, um, the drivers have had experiences with him over the course of the three races that we've had here today. So uh, definitely uh, getting the elbows out there on circuit, at least as far as they're concerned, I suppose. 
Less than 12 minutes to go here, not only of this race, but of the entire season as well. We are winding down the clock to the final checkered flag uh, here with Dan Martin getting himself all over the back of Rob Turner here at the moment. That's the battle that you're, having, that you're watching on your screen. It's a battle for the AM class lead. It's also a battle for P4 overall, believe it or not. Yeah, fantastic little battle here between Rob Turner and Dan Martin. Who's going to come out on top? Of course, Dan Martin's got two AM class wins on the board today. Uh, if he could late finish the season with a treble, I think he'd be mighty happy with that. He'll obviously be disappointed that he's just going to miss out on the championship. But, uh, you know, I think uh, sign off with a treble, that's, that would be a very good way to do it ahead of a lot of big a lot of big name drivers behind him you know you think about both Rob Turner and Dan Martin they've got Jürgen Frank Craig Williams Stoltzenberg McFarlane Holman they're all big big names Rushworth Guinness they're all behind him so it's really impressive from those two arm guys and here's here comes Turner he's got the inside line now yeah but it's Dan Martin going the long way around Turner slightly later on the brakes in towards turn one gives him a slight advantage coming off the corner but the run does go to Dan Martin Jürgen Frank is going to look for a route through on this one does he follow through in the tyre tracks of the one of the drivers or does he try and force the issue here Dan Martin swings it in on the head of Rob Turner so he's got the AM class lead now but how does Frank factor into this how does Williams and Stolzenberg get themselves involved as well that's what I'm asking a defence being put up by Dan Martin Martin gets turned by Rob Turner and oh that's not going to be um, something that's uh, uh, well uh, Dan Martin would have really appreciated it and potentially be looked at after the race by the stewards as well but it has uh, sort of uh, caused the battle between Jürgen Frank and Craig Williams and also Stoltzenberg as well in towards the sweeping S's section all get themselves strung out single file that one was a weird one though yeah yeah I'd be interested to get another look at it if we can but uh, yeah shame there because that was such a good battle going on between Turner and Dan Martin that has released Holman actually Martin's teammate ironically enough and uh, McFarlane's gone through as well. Stoltzenberg's gone through. They're about the yeah. It really did kind of shuffle the pack a little bit there. Um, meanwhile, at the front, Kieran Harrison, what a drive he's putting on! 4.3 seconds. He's ahead of Wojciech Savinovic. Amazing. Yeah, uh, brilliant performance, from Kieran Harrison. You know, if we <laughs> we haven't mentioned him all, uh, pretty much all race, and oh, he's, he, uh, that's, that's the reason. But there's the incident. Oh. It doesn't you look can see, pretty for Rob Turner, does it? No, but I think you could look at it the other... I think you're... Yes, but you could look at it the other way. You could see Turner was trying to break, trying to kind of avoid it, but kind of, Martin kind of didn't... He kind of came across under breaking as well. You could... De there'll be definitely two viewpoints on that one. Let's just leave it that way. And guess what? It's another RD Sim Sport car that's coming up on Rob Turner at the moment, and that's Holman down the inside completely sending it and uh, taking the prisoners gets himself ahead um, at least on the timing screen on the left hand side there so uh, yeah that's the uh, that's the situation and uh, well yeah I mean the stewards like I said the stewards are going to be very very busy um, after this uh, third race is done all the results that we've been showing so far are provisional and uh, at least from what Ben Gregory said in the YouTube chat uh, between race two and race three, that the drop rates may not have been fully sorted out um, at the moment, which makes our lives slightly more difficult. But we're just going to rely on what race control does uh, in the point spreadsheet. And, well, any corrections after that will, will have to be made. But uh, those are the numbers that we've been given. And that's the numbers that we're going to work on. But uh, we're having... A look at this fantastic train going on right now between uh, uh, well positions five six seven eight nine ten all involved yeah I think even with the uh, Ben is you know 82 points behind there isn't enough cars on the circuit to even if Dan Martin were to win the race overall there's not enough cars on the circuit to make last place be uh, a low enough amount of points if that makes sense so uh, right now, Ben Gregory, yeah, we'll we'll seal up that uh, AM Class Championship as the drivers all flashing their lights along as well, uh, mm -hmm. twinkling away in the uh, the cool of night here in Japan. 
I tell you what, there's nothing like a Japanese sunset. Uh, sunrise, excuse me. The sunrise in a, if you ever, jet, you know, in Japan, you're jet lagged, you open up the curtains in the hotel and the just the, the sunrises are just, they are spectacular. They are really spectacular. Yeah, I, I've been meaning to go at, at some point. Oh, you uh, have my, to. My, partner, my partner's been, but I, I haven't. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's definitely a bucket list item, uh, shall we say, um, to go and, and visit Japan at some point. But uh, I don't know Great when it's going to happen. Too. Great cocktails, too. Great cocktails. The best cocktail bars in the world, yeah, by a long way. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try those out. <laughs> yes, they're <laughs> well worth point, exploring. So, yeah. Uh, at some point when, when I go, because I think it's going to... Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely uh, something that's in the back of me and my partner's mind. Uh, let's just say that. But uh, uh, look at this. Uh, this is Craig Williams. I mean, it's very distinctive. Even in the in the dead of night, you see the flash of orange and an Audi. Uh, you know, it's going to be Craig Williams. And doing well in P6 here at the moment under a ton of pressure uh, from Ross McFarlane, which is uh, the pressure from him is no, no small feat to deal with. No, certainly not, no. And uh, Guinness, he's made a super run through the field starting near the back. And he's up into ninth position overall and right on the back of this uh, of this train here. Uh, so he's in the mix for some good points as well. I think it seems if things, uh, unless things dramatically change over the next few laps, it looks like Sim RC is going to come up just short in the team's championship. But uh, it's been a heck of a battle all season long. Yep, it, it really has, and well, it, you know, we're very lucky that it's it's this close. Um, well, it was this close uh, into the final race meeting of the season because it because it's so easily uh, have been one team running away with things uh, more than the other. Um, uh, that has definitely been the case in, in both uh, the pro and the AM class in terms of drivers here. Um, so we are very fortunate to have it so close. But of course. You know, the, uh, the the course of this race is dictated um, that, uh, well, Corsair is potentially going to get themselves into a situation where they're going to be able to take a team's win as well. Um, so, you know, despite them not quite being able to do it in the Drivers' Championship, at least they have the, the, the team's accolade to hold on to as long as they keep things clean here in the final five. Yeah, well, but there goes oh Craig Williams trying to hold off Ross McFarlane here. McFarlane's going to try and loop right round the outside and then get the switch back. Oh, as they rub a little bit as well, and oh, Beth Mc, uh, Williams just shoves McFarlane out a little bit there, and there goes Guinness. Guinness is going to try and make a look now on McFarlane, and I'm sure he'll show absolutely no remorse here as they battle away for this uh, team's championship. Oh, getting very tight and oof, big squeezes going on. Yeah, that's Holman getting stuck mm. into this. He doesn't, he doesn't care it's P1 and P2 in pro class that he's battling with here at the moment. Um, he's definitely uh, uh, deep in it. And, uh, well, Guinness is going to get himself a run here down the uh, pit straight. This is going to be interesting because I think uh, Guinness... Oh, he's going to go all the way to the pit wall here. He, I was, he had half a mind to try and bump draft McFarlane there. There's a battle going on all ahead of these guys as well that might end up going three wide. We might have two groups of three wide in towards turn number one. Nope, just the one with Guinness on the inside of McFarlane on the inside of Holman. And they get through unscathed and Guinness, the big winner out of all that as if he needed to win anymore <laughs> and it's uh jürgen frank oh. who's at the lead of that but it might not be a score oh, good save there oh they don't call him frank Bila for nothing wow we that was a good <laughs> save there from williams massive massive moment but yeah jürgen frank kind of leading this big pack there at the moment with stoltzenberg right behind him and now guinness is going to try and get in the oh in the mix is Craig Williams touches the quarter panel of Ross McFarlane and there goes the two uh, the two black and yellow Hyundais as Rabier goes through Turner also. Yeah, indeed he does and uh, Williams uh, has to be careful. I don't think he's suffering for any damage here because so easily picked up a bits and pieces from all the content that's been going on and they stack up once again through the S's. Oh, this is getting a bit too chaotic now in the bottom end of the top 10, which is what we have on screen right now. And we've got two minutes of this to go as well. Uh, potentially another lap and a bit for these guys. Um, it depends on when Kieran Harrison comes across the line. He does come across the line right about now. 
So that's 146. We're doing 148 in terms of lap time. So this should be the final lap. Well, oh, and I think it's going to go down to the wire here in this big pack. Uh, here for this last race of the season in the World Touring Car Series. Shuffling around for position, all desperately trying to break that slipstream. Oh, almost into the pit wall there as well. Frank still hanging on to that fourth position. And they've got seven seconds up to Stain Ledger in third position, who's going to score some vital points for Pure Sims to seal up in that old big dump. Big dump Ooh. there. And that is Guinness again. It is. It is. Well, that, well, if it wasn't sealed already for Pure Sims, I guess that does seal it um, as far as the uh, team's championship is concerned. The final lap of the race, final lap of the season here in the World Touring Car Series. Still battles going on. Here's a replay of what happened to Guinness. Just gets flat out dumped. <laughs> I'll be completely honest about that one. There's, there's uh, no other way. Oh, and the driver's in over the heads here on the final lap of the season. Craig Williams uh, sending it down and in there, contact. And uh, potentially, it wouldn't be surprised if there's more uh, towards the back end of this lap now. Uh, but of course, um, you know, with the situation that we have, all the championships have pretty much been decided. Um, of oh. course, minor positions further down the order in terms of championships might be unknown here at the moment. Craig Williams, McFarlane, Rushworth, all battling it out here in the very, very late stages uh, of this one. Tick time is ticking down to zero. There is Kieran Harrison, DKC by SimRC, comes across the line to win the final race of the season in the World Touring Car Series. And to well further back, we got a bit of a drag race going on. Here's Rob Turner, here's Craig Williams and Ross McFarlane. It's a sprint race to the line, but I don't think Williams is able to improve there. Oh, McFarlane might have been able to get past Williams, though. Did Oh, let's see what happens once the timing tower sorts itself out. McFarlane from Rush with from Williams is how it ends all the way back there. But we do have to do a couple of declarations. It is, of course, Crenton Guinness taking the Pro Championship win here today. He did that in the first race of the season. It will be Ben Gregory taking the AM class win in this one. He's a little bit further down the order, all things considered. And of course, congratulations to Pure Sims Esports for taking the team's championship win as well three champions here at the end of the uh, at the end of the season the three well uh, champion entities i will call them of course uh, teams uh definitely will have multiple drivers as part of them but either way celebrations all around even for drivers that may not have been getting out of this race what they were looking for or congratulating each other congratulating each other on the season well done There's Ben Amazing Gregory stuff there, yeah. according to Guinness. I mean, yeah, didn't didn't quite those last two races didn't go to plan, but luckily he had a bit of uh, <laughs> he had a bit of a buffer. Indeed he did, and quite a buffer it was. Kieran Harrison takes the race win here in the final race of the season. Wojciech Sividovich with another podium, by the way. Sividovich coming alive in the back end of the season, I imagine. Um, if he had a, a similar first couple of rounds as he has had to the last couple of rounds, maybe he would have been a championship contender as well, but we will never know. Steen Ledger in P3 with Jürgen Frank P4. Constantin Stoltz a big P5 with Lycrabia P6. James Holman P7, Rob Turner P8 as an AM-class winner. We've got Ross McFarlane P9 and Jamie Rushworth in P10. Craig Williams in P11 with Morgan Butler P12. Daniel Martin P13 with Crenta Guinness P14. Damien Oranis P15, Pete Newman P16. Then you got Benjamin Gregory, Harry Fox, Sheroslav Zebula, Marcel Fritz rounding up the top 20 cars. At the back, you got Rob Sutherland, you got Neil Stevenson, you got Jake Blackhall, you got Sam Smith, Ben Palmer, Nick Clibben, Scott Malcolm, and Raphael Grush. That's our final results run of the season, and we're about to get ourselves our final interviews uh, of the season here as well, drivers getting themselves in and ready to try and speak to us here at the very uh, uh, dying moments of the broadcast, I suppose, but uh, 
what a race, what an event, what a season. We finished it all off here at Fuji, uh, Peter. Yeah, re really cool venue to to finish the the season. Some pretty t pretty fun, pretty great racing there actually as well. Great side to side battling, lots of switchbacks. So really, drivers getting their uh, their elbows out with these touring cars. I think it really encourages a bit of contact as well. Uh, drivers are throwing uh, throwing big punches at each other. Uh, some of them came off worse, some of them came off better, but certainly gave us plenty of entertainment, that's for sure. Yep, yeah, it, it really, really did, and I can't wait to pick these drivers' brains, um, shall we say. But uh, we'll, we'll have a little bit of a conversation with someone that I'm going to call contender for driver of the day, at least. Um, it it would have definitely been driver of the day if, if that race three came off for you, Dan, but... Uh, Race one and two, you certainly couldn't complain. Yeah, it was a really good night, to be honest. It was just pressure off, wasn't it? Obviously, Ben had pretty much secured the overall arm championship individually. We were here for the teams. Um, so it was just pressure off after these first two races. Shame about the third, but I think I'm taking that as a win, if I'm honest. Yeah, so take it as a win. I mean, you, you, you tried your, your level best here in this uh, final round of the season to at least have a shot at trying to uh, go for the championship. It was a bit of a rift between you and Ben Gregory heading into the day. So it mathematically and, and, and in the terms of probability um, was, was relatively low. But uh, I mean, you, you gave it a fantastic effort. But uh, are you still kind of gutted about not getting the championship win, even though it was a, a remote possibility today? Um, to be honest, no. I think after those first three rounds, you know, I, I, I think on the first round, I didn't bother doing two races because I just assumed that once you're out, you're out. Like in some leagues, that's it. You can't <laughs> reset. So I didn't even get half points. So it was always a case of supporting Steve at the start for those first couple of races after those shockers from me. And then uh, once I realized that we were in a good space for the, the team's champs, that was the push, really. That was the motivation. And it kept me focused for the rest of the season. And um, lo and behold, I'm just... You know, I was catching Ben, but he was too far ahead and he's a consistent driver, so he's done well. And it's all credit to him. What are you going to do now? The uh, World Touring Car Series season has uh, has finished. What are, what are your next plans for, for both yourself and, and, of course, the team as well? Um, I think um, I'm going to dabble in with a bit of GT3, maybe a bit of Porsche Cup, mm -hmm. just just um, some free leagues maybe. I, I think we're going to come back for season free is it um i think if we if we get invited or get, get on the invite list um but i just want to say thanks to rd um james and rob um we we worked really well um, as a team over the last couple of weeks um it's been good support um good setup advice um and it was just a good atmosphere so it was my first proper league with a team uh, first proper league overall to be honest and it was just a really nice environment to be in so um thanks to wtcs thanks to yourselves for you know putting on like a show on youtube and that it's really good to look back on um and i hope to see you soon in the next next season yeah i we'll hope to see you soon potentially in a pro class yeah with how well you did in 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 the am uh we'll, we'll, we'll never say never well maybe there's a pro round class that'd be nice wouldn't it, I think. <laughs> well well we'll have to wait and see but uh, i'll let you get back to the rest of your team and uh enjoy those two race wins that you had today thanks guys thank you all right that was dan martin there doing very very well in the am class and well uh, a driver that did even better, at least as far as championship points are concerned, uh, Peter. It is uh, standing by with, with AM champion, Ben Gregory. Ben Gregory, you are the World Touring Car Series AM class champion. How are you feeling right now? Um, yeah, fine. F bloody finally, basically, I think. <laughs> I've been waiting to finally get a, f out, like a championship win for ages in the Touring Car Series. So to find, finally be able to stick it is, yeah. Uh, well, we're so pleased for you. I mean, tell us about what's the difference been this season, because I'm sure you've come close plenty of times before, but what's been the difference? What have been the key factors in getting the getting it over the line this season? I think the, having the luck of the draw, I think just try, keeping being able to keep out of the instance and just being able to finish well, and relatively consistently i wasn't like other than a couple of rounds where somehow i had pace i've always been a sort of like you know top five am car on track especially when it's near the start of season but 
and a couple of people dropping out was also quite, quite lucky, I think. But um, yeah, just trying to keep keep my head together, I think, was the main thing, and just not do anything too stupid. But yeah, that's that. It's yeah. Dan, Dan pushed me the entire way at the end of this season. He's like, I I can't give him enough like praise for how how well he's driven, especially tonight. That that RD car was an absolute rocket ship. Yeah, it has been very impressive. You're you're absolutely right there, Ben. But uh, but you are the champion. You've got it on the board. Just uh, tell us a few people about a few people who have uh, got you here uh, before we sign off. Yeah, all the guys from my team have been absolute, like, absolutely fantastic. Lee, who's been my direct teammate, has been an absolute champion when he's been able to turn up, like, because of work. All the guys, like, on track. Pearson's for not not being annoyed at me hopping in their Discord and having a chat today. But yeah, it was, it's, it's been, yeah, everyone in the season has been fantastic to raise against. Like, thanks to everyone for being awesome and respectful and yeah hopefully we can do it again next time out and and thanks to the two handsome race spot commentators as oh well. yes very very yeah, much so uh, yes i uh, could yeah absolutely well <laughs> done ben uh congratulations on that championship and looking forward to seeing you next season thank you very very much guys cheers there we go benjamin gregory m class winner i think he here. meant that conray you know yeah, <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. But uh, Ben Gregory, I'm class championship winner here um, at the end of the season, uh, getting things done here at Fuji. We do have one more interview to do, and it's not with a driver, actually. It's with one of the organizers, Andy Shield. Andy, second season of the World Touring Car Series uh, in the books. Um, how do you feel that one went? Well, I think... Um... It had everything really. It had excitement, it had drama. Uh, there was some great racing. There were some incidents which probably shouldn't have happened, but it's touring car racing. You know, cars are racing very close with each other around some pretty technical tracks at times. And, you know, that's just part and parcel with this type of discipline of racing. Um, it creates some exciting battles, um, but the margins are ever so small. So occasionally, um, there are always going to be a few incidents, but uh, you know that's why why we enjoy the touring cars. A, a little bit of drama from time to time, especially when we had so many cars on circuit. At least in those first couple of rounds, it, it can be quite chaotic uh, to try and organise everything. Um, uh, you know, uh, race control is definitely underrated um, when it comes to uh, a series like this, and uh, you, you, def you guys definitely have a, a, a very difficult job. Uh, behind the scenes, trying to put some of these um, some of these races together. Just to take me through uh, how the guys behind the scenes are feeling at the moment. There, there's no doubt work still to do, given protests and appeals and whatever after this race that we've just had. But but how's the mood going? I think we're we're, we're really happy. You know, coming into the second season, uh, we we were starting off the back of season one, which was very much shiny car syndrome with the new TCR cars that were dropped. So we were unsure as to how popular it would be for the second season and. You know, we, we filled up pretty quickly and um, we've got a great team working behind the scenes to, to keep things in order, um, you know, work on things like the balance of performance to, to try and make sure the cars are as balanced as possible within certain tolerances. Um, but, you know, it really wouldn't happen without the help of the stewards team over the season. Um, you know, shout out to uh, the, the guys who... Um, give up their time to, to make it happen. It really is a thankless task and, you know, it's it's easy for the guys to turn up and race on race nights, but, you know, there's quite a lot that goes on behind the scenes to you know, to keep things moving in the right direction and making sure the points are accurate, um, the decisions are fair and consistent when we do have to look at things like protests and incidents, but, you know, the the team, you know, can't, you know, express my thanks enough as to how important they are to, to make the series as success as it is today. What's what's on the horizon then for World Sim Racing? Because of course uh, you, you've you've got a good couple of championships under <laughs> your belt now, and well another season potentially of the World Touring Car uh, of the World Touring Car Series. Of course, you, you also help managing the uh, the the British Formula Four esports as well. So um, so what what what's next uh, for you guys? I think we're we're gonna take some time over the the Christmas break to really um, reflect on some of the successes we've had this uh, this past twelve months. Uh, but also look at some areas where we, we, we do need to have a little bit of a refresh. Um, some of our back-end systems just to try and streamline those so that we're spending time in, in you know, 
time spent in better places really so in terms of the series you know we're obviously wrapping up touring cars tonight we've got the world gt championship wrapping up on monday and then um in terms of uh, you know the new seasons uh, that will be uh, beginning of 2023 20, probably january late january early february uh we've yet to decide um timings with regards to that yet but certainly there's a you know a couple of months break for everybody just to enjoy you know the run up to christmas and into the new year before we start the you know start the clock again and and, and get cracking so um you know wanted to say just a, just a few things while i you know while i'm on with you guys and um, just want to say thanks to you uh, at race bots for calling the shots um just an awesome job as as always um Freem uk for being our our long-term partner on the series they've supported us for for a number of seasons now so really appreciate their investment with us as a as a league um big shout out to adam hedgecock for his uh, phenomenal photos that he's uh, putting together uh, mr hedge photography if anybody's interested in some my racing photography reach out to adam directly um simrace247.com who's also been uh, providing publications on their website to, to share information about both series um, on the platform. Um, and finally, you know, the drivers, you know, they're, they're the ones that make this series a success and without them, we don't have a series. So we hope to welcome as many of those guys back um, uh, for the, the New Year's uh, season. Um, apart from that, you know, thank you very much, guys, and uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for organizing uh, a really fun season. Um, I, I certainly enjoyed it. Peter probably did as well, and I and hope the drivers and the viewers did as well. So, so thank you very much for that, and uh, well, I guess you'll, we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, just one final thing there. C big congratulations to Corentin Guinness um, for winning the Drivers' Championship and obviously to, to Ben Gregory for winning the, um, the AM Championship. Um, you know, given the, the standard on the grid this season, you know, no mean feats. Both categories are extremely competitive, and I think that was shown throughout the season. Um, and uh, yeah, I think they're deserved champions. And finally, just a shout out to RD Simsport 2 as the Pro Am uh, Teams Champion and Pure Sims Esports as the Pro Team Champion for Season 2. Fantastic stuff. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us, Andy, and uh, we'll, we'll see you uh, whenever we get to see you next. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Have a good one. All right, see ya. But that's not the end of the interviews. We are going a little over time, but I think we'll make an exception for Pro Championship winner, uh, I think is the case here, uh, Peter. You're standing by with Corentin Guinez in the number 888 SIMRC. Corentin, congratulations on winning Season 2 of the World Touring Car Series. How are you feeling right now? Feel good. Uh, a bit, I would say, spicy about the last race um well i would have been better if i could finish better than this but uh yeah i'm happy with the season uh, i think it was pretty good uh i think it, i managed this season better than the previous one um i don't think i drove any better this season i mean any faster but i think i drove just a bit smarter um no silly mistakes like i've done at the end of uh, last season so yeah pretty happy with that to be honest how much of a kind of redemption is this for you? Because you were so unlucky in the last round of, of last season, you an, an incident that just wasn't your fault, nothing you could do to avoid it. But, uh, I mean, tell us how important it's been for you to, to put that score right this season. Yeah, it feels, feels really good. Um, yeah, last season was a big disappointment um, because, yeah, I think, yeah, I lost it. Like, I don't think I deserved really the way I lost it. Um, but yeah, I think that the mindset this season was a bit different. Of course, the um, gap in the standings was a bit different, so we had a bit more gap. So yeah, I just tried to stay a bit more calm. Like I, I, I've just been more calm this season. Um, I just tried to stay under control with myself. And uh, and yeah, I tried to not take too many risks, too many bad risks, I would say. And uh, and yeah, I tried to, to get great results each um, each round, that, that was the key, I guess, this season. Um, Ross is always good in this, um, these things. He's always really consistent, so it was up to me this season to um, have a great pace, of course, but being able to be as consistent as uh, he is. And yeah, but yeah, it's very, it's very cool to, to get this one uh, after what happened last season. 
And final question, Corentin. I, I noticed from your profile picture is uh, you and Kevin Estra is, uh, of course, a fantastic French racing driver like uh, like you. Did he have any tips for you when you met him? Um, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't have a, a chat with him because he was a bit busy. It's like the, the Friday at Le Mans is always a bit tricky with the, the parade, etc. So, yeah. But yeah, it's still very good to, to meet your, your favorite driver. Um, yeah, I tried to make a tribute uh, to him at Royal Atlanta going underground. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's really, really cool to meet your favorite drivers. Well, it's been a pleasure to, to watch you this season, Quarantine. You've driven superbly. You're a thoroughly deserving champion. Well done. And we look forward to seeing you back on track again in future. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, guys, for your hard work as well. Thanks. Well, there we go. Corinto Guinness, championship winner in the pro class here for season two of the World Touring Car Series. And that is where we will have to bring it to an end. It's been an amazing season here for the second season of the World Touring Car Series. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun to commentate. It's been a lot of fun to cover. And we've had so much great action out there on, on circuit that uh, it's definitely one of, if not the best, touring car league uh, here on iRacing. But from me, Conry Maddock, from my wonderful co-commentator, Peter Mackay, we will have to say for one final time for this season of the World Touring Car Series, goodbye. <laughs>